to seeing you two at the popcorn counter. I'm, I'm James Rizik. Uh, I'm Andres Lorente. I'm Ines Braga. At, Hello. Uh, oh, oh, Ooh, no. uh, Ines Braga is here with us. It's always fun. It's, it's, it's fun to bump into somebody you know at the cinema. So uh, so we're queuing at the uh, popcorn counter, as we always do, shooting the breeze yeah. um, before going to see the film, which is another sequel <sighs> this time round. Uh, we, we, cause we talked the other, like a few weeks ago, about how we reckon the 80s is the reason why sequels rule the roost these days that, that was like the, the the birth of this kind of sequel culture but so, I mean, sometimes sequels are good they're not always um you know disappointing and bad mm -hmm. so i was i was on the way here i was trying to think well what what times have there been when the sequel has actually been better than the original film because it does happen sometimes mm -hmm. hmm. Are, is that a rhetorical question, or are you asking me for an answer? No, it's like it's like a pro, no, it's a proper question. <laughs> so 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 bad is my rhetoric. I, no one can I tell. Think, no, I think no. I, I is... think the broad answer is that sequels are always worse. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm going I wait. See, you may suggest you suggest that, but I am going to I am going to raise the specter of Top Gun Maverick Ooh. now. Oh. Touche. Well done, James. Because because uh, we did. Uh, I I don't know about you. We did. We did go back and watch the original Top yeah. Gun. Uh, my friend of mine bought it on Blu-ray and he brought it around with popcorn and his sons and we all kind of <laughs> gathered around the telly and watched it together. It was kind of a bit weak and disappointing yeah. and not nearly as good You're as right, Top Gun. actually, yes. Okay. Good point. Yeah, because iTunes started releasing uh, the original um, Top Gun prior to the Maverick release and then we watched oh. it and, yeah, I was like, oh, my God, you know, Maverick is, so, yeah, it's a lot better, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's yeah. better in every way, really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, so the the classic one that everybody cites is Godfather Part Two. Oh, II. you stole my mm. thunder! Oh, but see, but I my my conf this is one of my movie confessions. I don't really like Godfather Part Two. Okay. I don't really like Godfather Part oh, One either. Jimmy. I mean, I don't like I don't like Godfather Part. I don't like Godfather Part Three, but nobody does. That's all yeah, right. Yeah. That's an acceptable okay. that, sin. That proves the theory that Godfather Three, <laughs> a third sequel, is just going too far. No, the third one is terrible. Yeah, yeah, really bad. Um. But I, I did love Godfather 2. I liked both of those films. Um, it sort of breaks one of these rules that I have. Is that I don't need to go back and see all this exposition very often. I mean, I usually rule against that. But it's so wonderful see, to see De Niro um, as the younger Brando. Mm. And you do get some pretty important information. And it's just still an entertaining story. So that one does work. So I think that's why everyone talks about it. And that's why I, being completely unoriginal, also came to that conclusion. <laughs> um, so that is, I think that is the one that... Uh, fares really well but then i think sequels very often for me it's just a way to soak more what more milk out of a stone right you're just trying to make more money on the same idea regurgitating it and godfather 3 is the perfect example it's probably what at least 10 15 years after the godfather 2 yeah. Yeah. and it's it's just crap and you know it, on every level mm -hmm. so i think that's why i always think sequels are just an excuse to make more dough I think I think I've just I've figured out why I don't like any of the Godfather films is because I've just remembered I saw Godfather Part Three first why? before the How? other two. Who let you? I think because yeah, I, think, yeah, no, I, I think cause like a friend said, "Oh, it's on at the cinema. Let's go oh, and see it." Oh, God. Oh, no. Who raised you? Who were your parents? That's a terrible. <laughs> How did they let you? So, oh. Sorry. Um, I was going to say also that uh, I did want to talk about comic book movies a little bit, what I would call comic book movies. I guess now they're graphic novel movies, maybe, <laughs> um, because they are. And we talked about this when we were talking about Wakanda Forever. It's like there's there's necessarily a sequel. They just have to keep going because there are probably more and more of the comics to turn into new films. So they're sort of the essential sequels, I, I guess. guess that's and that's understandable, for, yeah, because it's a huge yeah. universe, and I think each film is yeah. like a chapter, so that's different, I guess. But when each film becomes a two-hour, 41-minute oh, yeah. chapter, it's just too much. Like, I think these things, I think these shows would do themselves, I think Marvel would do itself a service by actually turning them into limited mm. series sorts of things, where you get six or eight hours to make eight different uh, comic books into films, and I think they'd have more vitality that way. I think when we see sequels, you think, like, Pirates of the Caribbean is a great example, and to me, oh. not being a Tolkien family a fan at all, like, the... the the uh, Hobbit films, what are they called? The uh, oh, Lord yeah. of the Rings things, um, where you've got these middle episodes that are just bridging a first and a last one, and it just gets to be sort of too much because each one is so intentionally grand, yeah. right? I think it's much better if you just cut those down into smaller things that are really snappy, and you can you actually can get more time out of them. I would watch ten Black Panther films if they're all really interesting contained stories that that hang together. 
but I can't imagine seeing, you know, like 10 two and a half hour mm. films. It's, <laughs> the problem, I don't know whether you've seen any of the Marvel television series. The problem is that most of them, to me, feel like they were written as feature film scripts and then stretched out to six mm. hours. It's yeah. not that they're, you know, taking advantage of the wealth of material yeah. that they've got at their disposal. It's more that they're just taking a little bit of that material okay. and squeezing Ooh, it out as go. long as they can. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's why I said originally that they're all crap. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that we're having this discussion. There are some um, Disney films, but... I was just thinking, yes, and, and going back, I think there are some, like Toy Story, they're very good in terms yeah. of sequels. Mm-hmm. So I think they're sure. an exception. There you go. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I, I'm going to argue that yeah, Toy Story does goes yeah. even further. I think Toy Story two is better than Toy I Story agree. one. Ah. And Toy Story three okay. is better than either mm-hmm. of them. They're oh. very, very good. I, I They're have... very special. I had to say, like, I love the, the three of them, really, really. But it doesn't feel like two or three are extending anything. You know, they they're good in their mm-hmm. own right. I have a theory about Toy Story three. At Andrews, have you seen it? Not in a long time, so I'm not going to... Inesh, I guess, I'm guessing you have. Uh, yeah, yes, because yeah, of the kids, yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it, it's, it's Dante's Inferno, isn't it? Or it's, it's, oh. it's the Divine Comedy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Toy Story 3, I think. Is that, but is that, is that a recognised thing? Very astute observation, yes, yeah. Well, I, I guess it must be, because like, you know, he sort of starts out like you in heaven mm-hmm. and he goes through purgatory and then they end up in hell yeah. don't they and then they get kind of mm. rescued which is so deep i have to say you know like again you know it's much more for adults than children i guess uh, um, yeah. because it is so deep and so moving like all of them I, i'm always in tears you know and there's there's such depth to them like the depth of the yeah it's just incredible yeah i'm a huge fan yeah didn't happen with other Disney films, I guess. You know, my, my daughter is really into Frozen, and I think Frozen 2 was a lot worse than Frozen. <laughs> yeah, Frozen 2 was a real yeah. disappointment, wasn't it? Which is such, such a shame because they have great yeah. characters, great characters. The material is mm. there. It's just such a shame that they you know, couldn't hit the mark. Yeah, that is disappointing. I, I, Jimmy, I think you bring up an excellent point about like the birth of the sequel as a business model in the 80s, because before that, I don't think there were a lot of sequels. I'm trying to think like the perhaps the Godzilla films were the, you know, oh, like the first the sequels Godzilla. and some of those monster yeah. movies. Right. But it seems like with, and I was going to mention the Star Wars because that first Star Wars film just blew me away. I remember I was probably eight or 10 years old. We saw a trailer on this terrible talk show, but my brother and I were so excited. <laughs> and then after that, the Star Wars, the whole series lost its luster very early on for me because it just wasn't new anymore. But that's, you know, that's the 70s, 80s where I think people were just, and Jaws, again, you know, Steven yeah. Spielberg with Jaws, oh, just yeah. more and more Jaws films. So, and Rocky, you know, this is the this is the era when people started to really yeah, make Yeah, and Terminator, the Terminator. Terminator, yeah. remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. it's, I think it's capitalism, isn't it? Can I, can I, can I rant on capitalism for a little? While? I think it's just people trying to make more and more money out of the same idea again and again. And I think that's why I have this natural just mm-hmm. revulsion to sequels. But um, I think you're right. It does. It comes out of that age because I don't think we see it as much. Certainly in the, you know, like yeah, the, the it, silent yeah. area, yeah, or or the golden age of cinema. So it definitely emerges seventies, eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have I have one other, I have I have a number of controversial opinions. I've been I've been writing oh. down on a list here. <laughs> okay, here's my here's my other controversial opinion. I'm going to name one other sequel that is better than the original. Oh, good. And I think I I don't think you two will agree. I think Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is the best oh. one. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Again, I think you're so distant in my memories that I'm just going to agree with you for the sake of uh, peace and quiet. I'm not sure. I can't remember, to be honest, like completely well. <laughs> God, you call yourselves film enthusiasts. Uh, it's, it, um, Temple of Doom is the one that starts out with um, Kate Capshaw uh, singing Anything Goes. Okay. And then, and, then, like, and then that's basically the theme of the whole of the rest of the movie. It's completely <laughs> Anything Goes. They just throw absolutely everything, all the stuff that's left over from all the other scripts that they yeah. never quite made. <laughs> everything just gets poured in. It's Everything Goes, oh. um, which is why it's such a riot, I think. I can't really like. Um, yes, I can't remember the the film, the whole film, but I remember like the the original one is is pretty special. But yeah, I'll probably have to look at it this weekend. Thank you, Jimmy. Probably watch it with the kids. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, well, well, I wonder. I don't know. Oh my God, yeah, Temple of Doom has a lot yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Is that the yeah. one with the snakes? Which one had lots of snakes? 
Oh, that's, the a, I think that's Raiders, isn't yeah. it, I think? Raiders yeah. of the Left Okay, yeah. The Temple of Doom has, has a guy getting his heart ripped out while he's still alive, oh, doesn't God. it? Oh, God. <laughs> Great! Yeah, for a weekend for a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep well, darling. Yeah. Great parenting of it. Um, I, I, I've got just one more, one more sequel that I think is definitively okay. better than the films that came before it. Um, and this is the fourth film in a series. Wow. Um, uh, which I think, yeah, uh, outstandingly better than the others. Um, probably, maybe, you know, the finest action film of the 21st century, Mad Max Fury Road. Mm. Oh, yes, the, that's the most recent one, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. one, yeah, the, yeah. Which I think is just an absolutely astonishing mm. achievement. Yeah. This is like, it's, like it's, it's so much, it's proper visual storytelling. I would love to see a script for that film because I don't think there's very much dialogue in it at all. It is, yeah, I really like George Miller. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's incredible. I loved it, absolutely loved that film. It was really, really, really good. And there I think you're getting into that maverick territory of just the filmmakers are getting more mature, the technology is catching up more, so I think it makes sense that they're making... I mean, technically, sequels should be great films. Yeah, like Furiosa. Yeah, they should be great films because you've practiced, mm. you've made the film before, you've got you've got this wealth of material to work on. Um, technically, they <laughs> you should, should be. Should know really how good. to do it by now. Yeah. Yeah, very good point, Jimmy. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm glad we found some sequels that we've liked because because face it, from here on in, it's sequels and nothing else. Yeah. And I think there is a sequel yeah. to Mad Max, right, with Anna Taylor Joy. I think she's going to play the oh. Furiosa. Yeah, oh, she'll play. Uh, right. Oh man, well that that I want to. Or watch. sequel or prequel? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, requel. There should be some, there should be some <laughs> other. <laughs> oh, I like that. Is that trademarked? Is that patented? The requel. Uh, we're having that. We're okay. having that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two Real Cinema Club, the requel. <laughs> Right, the film's going to start. We better get in here. We better go in. Before we go in, I just oh, yeah? realized we overlooked something. Could we just plug Santiago quickly for uh, Ines Braga, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. What can Please. you tell us about it? Where is it playing? It's on Portuguese television yes, and it's a series, it is. correct? It's a series um, and it's about a serial killer um, on the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage path. Yes, on the way, or as they call it. And um, yes, it's about several pilgrims that um, that are all starting. They all start their pilgrimage in Porto for different reasons. They all come from different um, parts of the world. Uh, there's a Portuguese family. There's um, two Koreans, a mother and son, a German, a British couple uh, on a relationship crisis. Um, there's a Brazilian widow, another mysterious Brazilian girl, and they all start um, the Camino and uh, some mysterious deaths, murder mm. is happening on the way. And um, yeah, it's an eight episode series, and it, yeah, it opened. Um, in October here in uh, Sikh television and now it's on their equivalent of iPlayer called Opto and yeah it's mm -hmm. a, every Friday there's a new one so the sixth oh, episode nice. will be released this Friday so only two more to really? go yeah. yes. and where where will it go after that does it go to a, a Netflix yeah, type well, service they're, or? they're in discussion I can't really say at the moment but yes yes so hopefully <laughs> yeah we'll land Excellent. on that Fantastic. And then I have to ask, is there a sequel? <laughs> oh, season two. <laughs> sequel season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season two. Well, yeah, it's it's being well received. Um, I'm okay. not sure. Uh, it's quite, it, it's a difficult thing, isn't it, when you finish a series and it's so painful in terms of, like, how much uh, you pour into it. And then, you know, now if you ask me, and I'm still, like, uh, reviewing all the, the, the cuts of... Um, now episode six so i can't really think about a second season but the, the the first season is very well set up in that in those terms like the, there has to be a second season i guess it could wrap up in the first one but i think yeah it, it is that type of series where um you i guess you would want to watch the second season because the the killer is only revealed on, on episode eight yeah 
<laughs> well, congratulations. It sounds excellent. It looks, the trailers look excellent, so people should look for that trailer okay. wherever they look That's at trailers. Very Santi- kind of you. Santiago. Santiago. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you for being on uh, the Two Wheel Cinema Club last week, I guess, and for sticking around for a full week waiting in this theater with us at the popcorn counter. Nothing to eat but popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> the Love popcorn. Anytime. Love popcorn.